Gonna, okay, so we're now recording. Um, in accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Winterberg Public Library access channel in this meeting of the Winterberg Public Library Board of Trustees <laughs> is being conducted remotely. The town of Winterberg in response to COVID-19 um, is currently following the guidance from the Winterberg Board of Health, Massachusetts Public Department of Public Health and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread. In accordance with the governor's order, all public meetings are able to be conducted remotely. This order, which you can find posted on the town website on the COVID-19 Information Center page, access through the town manager's website, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation and such, unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public uh, comment. For this meeting of the Lunenburg Public Library Board of Trustees, um, it is being convened by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference Accordingly, please be aware that other folk may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. The ground rules for this meeting. We're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude their remarks. The chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to participate. To provide any comment, questions, or motions, please hold your name until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to communicate with each other, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourself. For items with public comment, after the members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all public uh, commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So it is now 647 and I believe we can turn to the first um, item on the agenda, which is public comment. Is there any public comment? With no public comment, we're going to go to the agenda items. We have three um, agendas, I believe, um, that uh, have been provided that we can uh, go through and approve. Does, does everyone have access to them? Yes. Okay. So I have already read them. I don't have comments on it. So I'll wait for some indication that you guys are ready to give comments and move on. Hey, Harry. Yes, sir. There are only two sets of minutes on the agenda. Should we wait till the next meeting? I'm, I'm sorry, say that again, please. January 20th and February 2nd are the only two sets of meeting minutes yeah. on the agenda. I I'm wondering. Honestly, I don't. Point of I, order. I, I, I think since the other was a special meeting, I, I I'm sort of fine to discuss that at this point. Okay, just wanted to double check. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I uh, January six also. Okay. So why don't we um, if you don't mind, why don't we look first at uh, January six. January 6th was the, uh, the special budget subcommittee meeting. So there was only Donna, Laura, myself, and you, Harry, that, that were there. Uh, right. They can, and uh, looks good to me. I make a motion. We accept the uh, minutes uh, of January 6, 2022, as presented. Muir, were you, were you at that meeting also? I was. Second, I didn't have second. any. I didn't have any corrections for it. Okay. 
I think I think I heard Donna second. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So we have to do a roll call on this to approve these minutes. Laura. Uh, sorry. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, so I know you're right, Laura. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, um, Donna. Yes. Um, Dick. Yes. Harry. Yes. So they are unanimously approved. Um, let's now go on to January 20, please. I have a comment on the director's report, the third bullet point. It says there will be a membership assessment for, CW, for the CW Mars network. Shouldn't it read, um, there will be an increase in membership fee for the CW Mars network? That would be accurate, yes. Okay, um, so how about there will be an increase in the membership assessment? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, the fifth bullet point under director's report, I would, uh, it says there will also be some specific funding for technology. I would say there will be a request or there is a request for uh, funding to purchase technology. Okay, there is a request for some funding. Uh, there's a request for funding to purchase technology. For funding to purchase technology. Okay, thank you. Just um small typo at the bottom for attached documents, add 2022 to the third bullet point to be consistent. January, oh yeah, okay. Hey everyone, just so you know, I just got a text. Michael Ray will be joining shortly. Oh, good. Uh, are, are we done reviewing the uh, minutes of January 20? Okay, yes. it looks like you are um, indicating yes. So uh, yeah, please have a motion to accept the minutes as amended. So moved. That's Maya. Seconded, Kate. Okay. Um, we do a roll call vote, Laura. Yes. Bob. Yes. Dick. Yes. Kate. Yes. Donna. Yes. Maya. Yes. And Harry, yes. Uh, so unanimously approved. Uh, so now we are looking at the special meeting minutes for Wednesday, February 2nd, please. And the people that can comment on this are Dick, Maya, Bob, Harry. I can't um, make it. Oh, and Maya, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Was, you were not here, right? You were sick, right, Maya? 
Right. Yeah. I was just going to say that I should be removed from that. Uh, my apologies. My little, um, my, my youngest son gave me a pretty nasty cold and I was kind of laid out during that meeting. So I wasn't yeah. able to join. I okay. apologize. So Bob, you saw that right remove her from attending? Yeah, yeah okay. I did. Um, so, uh, for, and Laura, I'm sorry, what were you saying before? Well, I, I can't vote on it, but can I make a comment? Of course. Yeah. Because um, it said it's sec down at the adjournment, it says seconded by Kate. But Kate is not in the attending list. <laughs> that's a good point. So she's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's just a, tech that's just a technicality. Um, good point. Um, we need to pick up someone else who would who uh, I did, second. I was there. I don't, I don't remember who it was. I think it was you, Bob. Was it me? I think so. Is this the? For, I don't know why I remember that, but I, I feel like oh, okay. I, I do right. remember that. <laughs> All right, thank, just, thank you. I was okay. I'm um, Kate. What were you going to say? No, nothing, nothing. Okay. I have been around when Bob impersonates you, by the way, Kate, and I find it very disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to mute. <laughs> second bullet, second bullet point under the special meeting. Um, the fourth word is currently with. I believe it should be changed to will. Yeah, good point. Uh, oh, yes. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Kate? We are talking about the, am I in the wrong page here? The Thera, when we looked at the Thera Memorial Bylaws? No. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, no? Yes, it is. Okay. So I was there. You were? Maybe, yeah, Kate, Kate was maybe there. I wasn't there. Why do I feel like I was there? That was a Wednesday afternoon. Is that the afternoon meeting that we went in the conference room? I, I think you were there, Kate, and I was remote. I mean, I worked on the committee. I, I remember you were on you were on the, the side of the table by the windows. Yeah. I mean, I, I so, think I was there in second place, <laughs> Replace Maya with Kate and leave the seconded by Kate in. <laughs> there you go. Maya couldn't make it. No, I couldn't. Okay. Um, so you've got that, Bob? Yep. Um, so the so the adjourned comment was, or that statement was fine as it was. You're going to get my output, Kate, in, and you're going to change with to Will. Uh, yes, I got that. Okay, are there any other comments for this? So, uh, may I please have a motion to accept these minutes as amended? This is Dick. I make a motion that we accept the minutes of February the 2nd, 2022 as amended. I second it. That's Kate. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we're going to do roll call. Dick? Yes. Kate? Yes. Bob? Yes. Harry? Yes. So unanimous, unanimously approved. Thank you guys very much. Great job on your minutes, Bob, as always. Thank you. Um, Big Boss, you're on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so let's see. Can I share my screen? I can. All right. So I pulled up my report so you guys can follow along. Expenses for FY22 coming along. Um, biggest changes since last month, obviously, are salaries, um, but uh, pretty big jumps on the utility lines too. Electricity and heating both uh, were both getting close to. Um, closer to where we would expect them to be. Um, I did just pay a couple more utility bills. So next month they'll be moving along too. Um, I don't think anything too, anything else um, really jumps off the page there. We are two thirds of the way through the year. Um, it's like 56% 
expended as of the time that I ran the report, which I think was Monday of this week. Um, any questions on this month? Oh. All right. Um, so FY23 budget update. Um, we have submitted our requests. Uh, we had, I, I met with the town manager late in January to discuss those requests. Um, also met informally since then with the head of the finance committee. Um, and next Thursday will be my presentation to the full committee. Um, I think it'll be on around 7.30. Uh, but you never know. Uh, sometimes <laughs> sometimes um, there are conflicts for other presenters. I think we share a night with um, Eagle House and someone else. Um, but I would expect to be on at this point around 7.30. Uh, we did indeed, as anticipated, request funding for Fridays or additional hours um, and um, shifting over other expenses to the town's appropriated budget from places like the Friends um, so that um, as they kind of requested in the January meeting or suggested um, they be freed up to go above and beyond normal operational support for the library, uh, doing things that are truly special like the beam projector system. Um, tonight is the town manager's presentation to the finance committee. Um, so ClearGov hasn't, um, hasn't been updated yet on some of our requests. So I can't, um, can't update you on how exactly she responded to our requests. Uh, most of the above target requests are still pending um, in ClearGov. So uh, we can catch up, uh, I'm sure, on the recording of her uh, presenting this week. I think she presented to the select board as well um, on Tuesday. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, the draft of our LSTA grant um, is off to uh, the consultant. She'll give us some feedback um, and we'll keep honing that draft. The final draft will be due in April. I think it's the 24th. Um, the vision that I have for the project will be um, enhancing uh, STEM kits and STEM education in town, um, kind of building off some programs that we already run, uh, but providing some circulating kits uh, that will increase access, um, especially targeting underserved and new populations. Um, so it'll dovetail nicely with most of our goals in the strategic plan. Um, and I think we have, uh, we have some great partnerships that will really um, strengthen the proposal that, that, we, that we'll, we'll uh, submit. Um, so I'm optimistic. Um, the other part of the project that I hope will happen will be um, a series of uh, programs that will kind of uh, complement that for other age demographics. So for adults, repair clinics um, and uh, re to, to kind of help with reuse, recycle, uh, upcycle of technology and other wastes. Um, so uh, I'm excited about it. I think the staff seems excited about it um, and we'll see We'll get some feedback on, on the draft, uh, keep you guys updated. We have had two more interviews for the digital services position. Um, yeah. have two more first interviews scheduled actually, or th I guess they're not, they're not finalized, uh, but we're trying to schedule those two other first interviews. Um, and uh, feeling like we'll definitely invite back at least two 
candidates for a second interview. So that's promising. Um, and the other big note, I did submit the annual report um, that'll be included in the, the booklet if they print them again um, for any yep. town meeting. And I uh, did put a copy of that report in the folder for you guys <laughs> to read if you wanted to. Excuse me, Mira. Sure, Bob. Yep. Um, did you say uh, you had two interviews and you have two more scheduled? Yeah, so we've had four total first interviews um, for the position and we've got two more scheduled. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yep. Um, programs have been um, going in the same kind of same uh, flavor as as they have been the last couple of months. It's a it's an interesting in between time. Um, Harry, is that a question? Yeah, Muir, I'm sorry, I I was muted, but no, I'm not. I just want to let everyone know Michael Ray has joined us. Welcome, Michael Ray. Hooray! Thank Hi. you. Hi. Good evening. Hi. So let's stop talking about him. <laughs> oh, I better delete this next part of my report. No. Um, Program, programs, you know, we've had a last month was um, the the garden program that had 60 attendees, um, which was a virtual program. Um, but, you know, it, programs are kind of um, hit or miss right now. Uh, some of them have very good attendance like that. Some of them are, are kind of sparsely attended. Um, the big the big note for February next Wednesday, um, we have a, a, a Black History Month flavor program. Um, it's jazz in the civil rights movement um, with a, a professor, I think from Tulane, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and that is supported by the Friends Sandra Lane Cultural Events Fund. Um, it should be a fascinating presentation um, and uh, a nice uh, kind of celebratory uh, feel to it, I, I hope. Um, and I hope we'll get lots of people to attend. We are continuing, uh, especially for teens and kids, take home kits. Um, those have been uh, kind of a popular format uh, as far as engaging uh, with programs. And uh, craft labs too uh, have been quite popular. The family craft lab uh, was well attended last month. Um, and um, coming up this month is the winter sewing, uh, what seems to be an annual uh, annual uh, series of programs for us, um, Winter Sewing with Robin Venezia. Uh, this year, focusing a little more on vegetables than she has in the past. Um, again, should be, there'll be kits that, and I think um, a virtual meeting to, for her to present and talk about techniques and how to do it at home. It's been an interesting building and maintenance month too. Um, it's had some DVR security camera issues. Um, oh. Still kind of lingering with that. Um, kind of afraid our older uh, DVR uh, for the cameras is is on the fritz. Uh, it's on the way out. Um, we also lost heat um, two weekends ago, uh, so it was quite cold in the in the library last Monday. Uh, sent staff home by 11.30 and closed the library. Um, and uh, at that point, the part that had failed had been bypassed in the boiler room. Um, but it takes a while, obviously, for the, the system to catch up. Uh, it was low 50s when we, had, when we arrived in the morning. Um, I think 53 by the time we left back to normal now and um, obviously warm days lately I uh, haven't been needing to heat it quite as much um, another another thing that I was discussing with Susan uh, is the teen room um, she has made a couple temporary short-term changes that hopefully we'll be able to uh, support with uh, some purchases by the friends as far as uh, some shelving um, the collection in there has been, uh, there's not enough room and, and there hasn't been enough room for it for a while. Um, so she's added a couple shelves, uh, taken down the blackboard in the corner, 
um, and the bulletin board. Um, so there are two more bays of shelving for her to utilize in there. Um, and we are trying to get rid of the, the spinning racks that take up what seems like almost a quarter of the room um, so that there will be more space for a, a few more teens at least to be comfortable in there uh, with the continued uh, attendance uh, of teens in the afternoon <coughs> definitely uh, will be beneficial to have a little more space for them to to get comfortable um, <coughs> wander less to other areas of the library Technology, uh, the big discussion um, lately has been about thin client solutions. Um, obviously, uh, if we are to buy anything, there's some funding that needs to be um, figured out. Um, but I think uh, we do have a, a plan to start um, when we can identify funding sources uh, so we can start to replace uh, the remaining thin clients. Uh, as a public access computing solution. And uh, finally, the mask requirement has been lifted for town facilities um, and employees. And uh, although most are still wearing the masks. Uh, I think that that is all that I've got for you. Any questions? I just just comment that your uh, your annual report I, I thought was very good and especially I like the fact that uh, that you broke out the individual departments the individual you know areas of the of the uh, the library for mention as well so thank you I have a question yeah you said that the heat was not working right yeah what if that happened over like a long holiday weekend or something is there some kind of alarm or something that would notify you? Yep, we do. We've got temperature sensors. So um, we knew, I think it was Sunday afternoon that the temperature had dropped. And uh, you know, the, the workers were already there um, okay. by the time staff showed up. It just hadn't, hadn't recovered enough um, for, to, for us to, to stay there all day. <laughs> Are there any other comments to the director's report? Okay, so can we please move on to chapter seven from the trustee handbook? Chapter seven, perfect timing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this chapter is about funding, um, budgeting and financial management. Um, yeah, ultimately the, the financial responsibility for the library lies um, in the hands of the trustees. Um, and so being aware uh, of the financials is obviously imperative. Um, and that's, that's why each month part of my report uh, to the board includes an update on the relevant uh, year's budget and expenses. Certainly, uh, if, you know, and, and part of why I ask if, if you guys have questions, um, you know, I certainly can discuss more details with, with you if, um, with any of you, you know, outside of a meeting, if, if, that's, if that's something you need. Um, but it is, it is an important thing to understand and to, to stay on top of. It is public money, um, so that, that's where the, you know, the, the trust, the, the name, the name is in trust. Uh, so that's, that's really what it's about. Um, public is trusting that this money will be responsibly expended. Uh, and uh, that's why we're all here. So um, let's see, tips for successful budget planning. <laughs> First, know who does what. You know, as I think that's kind of the, the one of the themes that we keep hearing through, through the whole handbook itself, um, knowing who's responsible for what pieces of operations. Um, you know, policies and procedures uh, lie with the trustees and, and the day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, grunt work 
is is mine. <laughs> uh, you know, so we typically what happens for us, you know, we have we get our our town manager's budget, you know, target budget, um, and then the director um, puts together some some recommendations for our requests. And uh, I meet with the budget subcommittee to discuss those in more detail and, and su submit them and update the whole board uh, as appropriate. So, you know, the planning context is important too. Um, and, you know, I think the things that, that really impact that strategic, you know, the planning, the strategic plan, um, where do we want to go? What do we want to try and do in the future? Um, the general financial fiscal health of, of the community itself. Uh, you know, obviously last year, I think it's a good example. We, we didn't request much above the town manager's target, but this year I think we requested something like 12% above. Um, so last year we really didn't know what the financial situation was, was going to be, what the long-term impacts, uh, short-term impacts even of, of the pandemic. Um, and, uh, this year we're, we're, we know a little more uh, and uh, are a little more secure in, in asking for more. Um, takes time, question everything. I think that's a good, good, um, good advice for, for most situations. Uh, you know, why are we doing things a certain way? Is there a better way to do it? Um, you know, doing things just because that's the way it's always been done doesn't necessarily uh, bring about the best results, um, I think. This, this group is, is very good at that. Um, and I'm glad when you guys ask questions because they are always good questions. And you know, whether it's just about understanding context or, or procedures or you know, some you know, deeper questioning about why we do things, uh, it, it's always appreciated. Uh, realistic goals, I think, is, is, is also good. Um, going into the process, you know, understanding that it's a negotiation too. Um, we're not always going to get everything we ask for. <clears throat> Number six is a, is a good, um, another good piece. Uh, don't restrict your budget to the available funding. Um, when you're budgeting, really, you, you want to make sure things that need to be taken care of are taken care of. And you know, ultimately, if you can't find you know, the funding in one place, there are other alternatives. You know, we've got state aid. We've got the LSTA grants that we're applying for. And, and I think you know, those are good examples of, of, of doing that. We also, are in Lunenburg, are extremely lucky to have the group of friends that we have, the friends of the library. Um, you know, for whatever, whatever reasons, uh, you know, long-term, they've established a very healthy um, and, and relatively secure um, a bunch of funds, uh, and they're able to help us uh, immensely. Uh, with that in, the, in a number of different ways. Um, yeah, so, you know, the budget presentation, again, good timing. Next next week, I'll be presenting, um, you know, to the finance committee. Um, and that, for us, is really the main, the main type of presentation we do. You know, I have the, the one on, it's not one on one because the finance director is there too, but you know, the meeting with the town manager that I have to talk about the, the budget requests um, is, is uh, important too. Um, but it's, you know, a, a meeting between, you know, town, town workers. So um, the main public view of our budget requests happens at the, the finance committee meeting. Um, implementation, um, you know, although the trustees are really responsible for uh, ultimately for securing funds, uh, the director and the staff uh, implement the funding um, so that we can provide services to the town. Um, that's you know another piece, big piece of the the monthly report that you guys get. Try and update you guys on on things that we're doing um, as far as that process. Um, so trustees should monitor fiscal operations to assure uh, several, several things. Financial records are complete and accurate. Um, you know, part of our record keeping happens outside of the library with the, the finance department. Um, but we can, you know, we also 
uh, have access to things if if um, you know, beyond my report if if we need to look at those. Um, also to assure that resources are managed in an economical and efficient manner. I think you know that, that's part of the feedback you guys give um, on my reports. We're asking about uh, different expense lines um, and questioning why we do things in a certain way. Um, the system of internal controls, um, it exists to safeguard the assets. Um, accounting is accurate and reporting being done on in a timely and accurate manner. And that, that really comes down to the annual report that I make to the MBLC. Um, I prepare it, um, but then it, it, it goes past uh, you know, the, chair, the chair's eyes and uh, we both sign it before it gets submitted on time. There are a number of, of sources for library funding, and, and this is good to keep in mind. You know, we, we've got the friends, um, and we've got the, the local municipal support, um, but there are all sorts of other funding that, that we deal with um, for libraries. You know, the, sta the state aid funding that comes directly to us. Um, there are gifts and memorials. Um, most, most years we have at least a couple hundred dollars in gifts that are given to the library. Um, some of them are memorials. Some of them are, are just people wanting to, to gift money um, so that it can be used by the community through the library. Um, some libraries have foundations. It's kind of like a, a friends on steroids. Uh, oftentimes it's larger city libraries have, have foundations. Um, this is another flavor of 501c3 really, or you know, nonprofit group. Uh, I don't, are they 501c3? I'm not sure. Um, might be a different section um, of the code. Grants and foundations, you know, we're pursuing um, some grants this year with the LSTA grants, um, but there are always other grants out there. Um, if there are needs that we identify, we can go after them. Donations from service clubs, civic organizations, and individuals. Um, we, our partnership with the, the, uh, the business network group that um, used to meet weekly um, before the pandemic hit, um, generally that yields a, an annual gift from that group. Um, they've been quite generous in the past uh, and are very appreciative that we let them use our space. Um, yeah. Um, so another note that's in this chapter is about um, gifts and trusts and, and endowment funds, and, and that's you know hopefully that legislation will will be passed um, pretty soon. Um, kind of still in the same <laughs> holding pattern that we've been over the last couple of months, but um, you know we'll hopefully soon be in charge of of that ourselves. So another thing for us to take care of. Um, There are, you know, the, the next section is about state aid um, to public libraries, and, and there are estimates that you can, you know, you can anticipate how much state aid will be coming to us each year. It's been fairly, fairly consistent over the last few years, um, coming in around sixteen thousand dollars a year, the last few years um, for the number. Let's see. There are always federal funds, grants, a little more details on those. Um, and the last part of the chapter talks about audits um, and the fiduciary responsibility for all funds that the trustees have in the library budget. Um, and so, you know, the municipality itself has an annual audit um, and that do it does include the library department and the, the funding that we have. Um, and I am sure if we wanted to look at the findings of the audits, we could do that. Um, any questions about chapter seven? A couple people moving, like they're trying to unmute. Okay, can I ask a question? Hey. 
The question yeah. simply is, um, are your meetings now live? Are you meeting when you meet in front of these boards? Are they public? Are they, what's the protocol now for any uh, So the, like the presentation that I have to the finance committee? Yeah. Um, will be the, so they meet typically meet in the um, in the meeting room at town hall, which is wired um, for live broadcast um, in person, and also uh, to have a virtual component. So it's a hybrid meeting, um, which I believe is the plan for the near future at, at the very least. I'm sure Michael Ray can confirm or deny um, until the end so of July. Till the end of July. Yep. Um, so the um, answer is it's hybrid. Um, okay. if, you, if people want to attend, they can in person. And there, there's also a virtual component uh, for those who are interested in that. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. No other questions. Is there any other discussion regarding the... Um... Chapter seven from the trustee uh, handbook. Okay, so uh, I'd like to move on to the next agenda item, bylaws review, discussion, um, and vote. Um, Dick, are you comfortable taking this? Unmute, yep. Uh, I, I, first, I first wanna thank everybody um, in particular, Dick, who was really active on this um, for their participation in, in getting uh, these bylaws to this point, I think relatively quickly and I think um, done in a really good way. So thank you. Thank you. No, it was, it was a, a group effort and, and especially coming up as uh, Muir did with the, uh, the Thayer, uh, which of a number of the ones that had been looked at was probably closest to the way that we were. So it was really uh, pretty much a matter of replacing Lancaster with Lunenburg, replacing Thayer with, uh, with Lunenburg and uh, doing some, some alteration in terms of the, uh, the way that they're elected, the number of members, uh, the names of the uh, the officers of the of, of the board, uh, and then when we were through with that, turned it over to turned it over to Muir, and said, "Make it all the same." Uh, and and one of the big things was making sure that the we are the uh, uh, the Lunenburg Board of Library Trustees, not the Lunenburg Public Library Board of Trustees, so that it agrees with the language of the charter. And uh, Muir had put this in the, uh, the folder. Uh, and at least when I printed it off or I looked at it there, it also has, shows all of the, all of the edits. So uh, open it up to the board to comment, correct, whatever, and would ask Muir to sort of try and keep track of it and ultimately put together since, since you did the, the last edit, the, you know, what, whatever needs to be finally edited. And then the question as to once we approve it, where does it go? Does it have to go to the, to, uh, the town manager, uh, town hall? Uh, I've got, I've got a, the town council and the monthly town council um, day is Monday, I think. Monday the 28th, not, not, not this coming Monday. Monday the 28th, and I've got a, a time slot with him. So I'll discuss the language, make sure run it by him, and, um, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, super. And so I'll give, you, I'll give you an update when I have that information from him. Okay, so chime in anybody. Uh, and go through it sort of line by line or, or you know, the trustees, the number of trustees and qualifications term term and remuneration zero <laughs> the term is three the remuneration is zero uh, and 
and how vacancies are filled, which we've had to do in the past somewhat. I didn't understand that um, sentence where it says such appointments shall be valid until the next town election period. And then the part in brackets. Where are we reading now? At the bottom is, of the page under vacancies. So, the, uh, so once, once the appointment is done, it's valid until the next election. I'm not okay. sure that uh, whether that for the remainder of the term of the replaced trustee, because sometimes if the if the replaced trustee, for example, has two more years on the term. The yeah, we, all, all I would do, rather than uh, keeping that appointment for the remainder of the term, it would just change the year um, on which three trustees were up for election, three, three, three positions on the board were up for election. Um, if it if the term lasted longer than you know, the rest of the year until the next election, if that makes sense. So if there are two, if there were two years left and, and the, on a member who had resigned on that, that position, um, that position would become up uh, at the next election. Um, and if it had been a year, that had been a year where two board members were up, it would then be three positions up for election. What if there were but three? The but the election is only for the remainder of that term? I don't recall the last time we did it. <laughs> yes, Laura. It was Laura, yeah. If someone resigns from their position, the election is only until the remainder of their term. So, so there would be the election, they would be up, that position would be up for election at the next town meeting, the next town election, but that would be just for the remainder of that term. Correct. So do we need the, italic, the italicized phrase there? We probably don't because that yeah. is, I think, in the charter. Right. That the, the, the method of doing this with the joint <clears throat> boards and everything is, is covered covered in there. So I think that I think that just complicates because that's the, the prior sentence appointments shall be valid until the next town election, period. So I think we can probably dispense with that. We'll do so. Excellent. Okay, so the next section is responsibilities of the Board of Trustees. And again, it cites uh, Mass General Laws, cites the, the bylaws <laughs> of, the, uh, of the town and pretty much goes along with the what the what the charter what the charter says and what we just went over with the uh, the handbook good thing good good thing these all match up yeah just how it happens uh, the appointment of the director Point and regularly evaluate. Uh, pretty clear. Policies. <clears throat> Library budget. Planning, which we've just done. Uh, 
the special committees we played around with a little bit in that uh, the way that we have always done it is that the, uh, you know, we basically volunteer for what we want to be on. Uh, and then those, the appointments technically are made by, by the chair. So that's why that was there. And any, any other special committees only last as long as the job lasts. So uh, for example, the committee that, that we had for uh, the five-year plan, once that, once that job was done, the committee is automatically disbanded. The uh, collective authority of the board, that everything is done by a quorum of, of, the, of the board, the vote. No individual trustee may make decisions, act or speak for the board, unless specifically authorized to do so by a majority vote of the membership of the board of the duly called meeting. Uh, you've seen that sometimes with, you know, news reports where a board member of this board or that board will, you know, speak out and the rest of the board is going, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, we, we, we speak as a board. We don't speak as individuals, uh, you know, unless you're authorized by the board. So, I mean, that's pretty clear advocacy. I have a question there. Um, C, it says trustees should study and support legislation, which will bring about the greatest good to the greatest number of libraries. So we should advocate for things that might not be good for our library? I think the thought is that if there is library legislation that benefits libraries in general, would also benefit ours. I don't think you would envision a, envision a situation where uh, you would be looking at legislation that increases Boston Public Library's share and cuts everybody else's budget. Now, so I think what's good for one library is likely going to be good for all. So I, I'm not sure how that I, it just seems I, I kind guess, of strange wording. Yeah. Anybody else want to chime in on that one? It is, I guess it I'm is the only one that thinks it's weird. It is a noticeable, it, it, you know, the language is language you notice. Um, but I don't think, as I think about it, it's not likely to be exclusive, um, an exclusive distinction. Um, I think you could envision um, situations where there might be an interest to your specific library as a trustee, you know, for us, the Lunenburg Public Library, um, that might not necessarily benefit all, you know, as, as we're advocating for legislation, um, I think what the phrase is suggesting is that thinking about the benefit of libraries in a more general sense than your specific library uh, is an important goal. Um, um, if I may, I totally agree with what Muir just said. I interpret that as trustees um, should be generally um, advocates of all libraries. Yeah, I don't. Th I don't think it excludes. I don't think it excludes or or would. Or would make us, you know, under these bylaws, support something that would not be good for us, in that the greatest number of libraries includes us. 
Can I ask a, a question on this topic? Yeah. What's the what's the necessity of uh, this? Like without it, would would members still behave similarly, or is this a needed thing to for a certain goal? I think the goal is as part of the as part of the the bylaws, which really are, are you know a policy document uh, that it would be good to have something in there as a directive that trustees as part of their duty should support legislation that benefits libraries. Whether we, you know, the, the maybe just change the wording uh, to something like that rather than this, the greatest good for the greatest number and simply have it trustees should study and support legislation which benefits libraries because that is that should be the way it goes benefit our library i mean the library because it's i don't know that we've ever expressed anywhere else that it's our goal to support other libraries, I, it might just be easier to specify the Lunenburg Public Library since they are our bylaws. But do we really want to be that narrow that we're only going to we're only going to support legislation if it benefits us? Um, in, in this of- case, I, I might I might argue, yeah. Just because of for this specific document, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think we haven't gone through the handbook far enough yet to get to the chapter on advocacy. Um, and so I think knowing um, knowing what's coming, <laughs> uh, I think this statement in the bylaws would serve as a formalizing of that responsibility. Um, and and I, I do think that probably this is one of the um, one of the areas where we spend a very little amount of time thinking about our specific group um, and and certain some some um, you know some boards, uh, expend a lot more energy uh, in that in that realm, um, but I think that that that's what this phrase really is is driving at um, the 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 role that library trustees can and probably should play in you know the annual annual process of making new laws or, ch- or changing laws for the state um, and 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 other laws, but um, you know, thinking specifically about uh, the legislative brunches or lunches that happen, you know, ac- across the state, uh, where that are organized by libraries, mostly trustees, um, and and sometimes directors have some involvement in it, um, in order to, you know, uh, interact with, you know, the state legislators and 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 push forward. Um, legislation that that does benefit libraries in the state and whether that's you know increasing or maintaining funding levels um, or or other other um, outcomes uh, it is it is important that the people uh, ex- individuals um, voice uh, voice uh, concerns and and um, support for you know those things um, and the most logical people to, to perform that role are library trustees, because you're connected to what's happening, um, you know, you know, th- through our meetings and, and through interacting at the library and, and knowing your individual communities, um, you've got expertise that can really positively impact that process. Um, 
so you know i think i think it's going to be difficult for you guys to to know exactly how you want this phrased um without without thinking longer about advocacy and, and maybe you know, waiting for when we review you know that part of the handbook a little more um that's my impression of of the what the intent would be on this section on this section of, of the language Harry, I see your hand. Yeah, I, I actually, sorry, I'm, okay, I thought I was muted. I, I think we're dwelling on this quite a long time. I, I have just a suggestion. Um, I don't know that we really need to push it back, but first see trustees should study and support legislation, which will um, bring benefit to the Lunenburg Public Library, as well as the greatest good to the greatest number of libraries. And I think that, um sort of addresses it. it 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 i think highlights our own library which i think is fine but it doesn't exclude other libraries it includes other libraries and i think that's how we i think that's how we intend to operate or how we do operate that's a i think that's a good suggestion because you think about things like the uh the building grants uh, you know, those don't always benefit us, but it certainly, you know, it did, and it may in the future, and you would certainly want to be able to support that. So you want to run that by, run that by us again, Harry? Uh, so I think what I said was that. trustees should study and support legislation, which will be supportive of the Lunenburg Public Library, and will bring about the greatest good to the greatest number of libraries. Okay, so that just that that puts us in particular, but keeps the keeps the larger idea of as library trustees, we're all in this together. And I think that's a good concept. Okay, is that, yeah, I, that work for you? Or? I'm sorry, who did you ask if that works? Because well, I was going to. Oh, Oh, that's, I think that does sound better. Okay. And Maya, are you still there? She's. Sorry, Hi, Maya. No, I'm here. I just, I thought I was unmuted. I was talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fine. No, I think that's great. That was kind of the point I was, yes. Happy. Okay. Okay, the officers. Uh, pretty clear cut. I have a question. Yep. Under um, duties of the chair, num uh, letter C, it says um, that the uh, to serve as an ex officio member of each committee. Um, That doesn't affect, like if we have a subcommittee meeting that has three members and then the yep. ex officio member, does that affect open meeting laws? It once, once you have, if you, if you have, Michael Ray, if you have even three members meeting together to make decisions. Not until you hit a quorum. So since this is a seven member board, uh, you hit that at four. So if a person is quote unquote ex officio, unless he shows up <laughs> for some for some reason, and I mean like uh, when we had the uh, the subcommittee to do this, and Harry showed up, I mean the meeting was the meeting was posted as was the uh, as was the budget committee. So. Uh, yeah, I think not, it, I, it's I really just describing the the role of the the that position on the board you know and differences between individual chairpersons um, might might manifest you know Harry doesn't attend all subcommittee meetings um, or ad hoc committee meetings, but he might, you know, someone else might if they want to, and, and don't, they don't necessarily have to 
participate um, on the same level as the other you know, members that have been appointed to that committee. Um, but the the that is you know to know that what's happening and and um, um, maintain awareness of the the dynamics of that smaller group um, are, are are described as part of the the role of of the chairperson of the board as a whole. You know, the, my 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 sense my sense right along is even if I if I were on a, a subcommittee that only had you know, technically three members, I'd still post the meeting because we're, we're, we're meeting, we're discussing, we're going to make decisions. Uh, and even if we don't, you know, we have, a, we may not have a quorum, but we're still going to make decisions to bring back to the board. So. Well, we didn't for the uh, strategic plan post any of those. We didn't. There were only there were three, three of us, us plus yeah, three of us. Yeah, there were three of us. But there there was wasn't there one meeting that Harry joined us for that we posted. I can't remember. I feel like there was. I don't think so. I, I think, think so. that I only participated in that in our in our monthly meetings. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't really. I think the ex officio. I don't see it as a major thing with, with posting. I, okay. I, I do have a suggestion on this. So I would suggest that maybe we want to change the wording to say, and this is point C, to appoint all committees to pursue the work of the board and may rather than to serve and hey. may serve as an ex officio member of each. Okay. That puts it into the realm of, of maybe. Okay. Or, are other people okay with that? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And Muir, I just want to make sure you, you're making the notes on this, correct? I am. Thank you. All caught up even. <laughs> okay, down to the duties of the vice chair, which is basically to be the chair when the Chair is available. The secretary who does a wonderful job. I haven't actually ever done any correspondence. Uh, that the be there. Yeah, if we, uh, you know, if we wanted to send letters, you would be the you would be the guy. <laughs> Okay, that, it, usually Harry does that. Well, but, you know, Harry can have, you know, the, the, just because of, this is your duty, but. Yeah, I think it's the, I think it's generally the duty of the secretary. But okay. But individual, you know, the chair or whatever might, might still be able to do it on his own. This doesn't preclude necessarily. Okay. I'm, I'm actually trying to think of any letter I've written. I, I don't because sometimes you ask me to do it. Yeah, you know, I don't. With, I, I think I wrote a letter commending Dan Nadareski. Yeah, um, yeah. And I may have also written correspondence to the director of the DPW. I think I board. think that's right. I don't honestly think I've written anything other than emails to Heather or uh, Julie or m maybe Michael Ray. Um, and okay, and, so the and met with them. So the the board the board generally controls, or you know, in in, in a situation like that where we can ask Muir to do it because of of his his knowledge and his relationship, but it still comes from the board. And if Muir wasn't available, Bob, be your job. Okay. Okay, the open meeting law we took as as it was, and uh, added I think on Kate's recommendation, the uh, the ending, which is basically what we've you know been doing 
uh, what Harry's been doing on the uh, on the agenda, which is instructions on how to remotely participate. Um, I, I just thought of a question. Um, there's a lot of references to the mass general laws in here, yep. quote, you know, quoting chapters and sections. Um, we just copied these from the Lancaster bylaws. Um, do we don't have any sense whether these are accurate or, or should we bother to verify these or do we need to worry about that? Um, I can, I'll, I'll go through and, and verify. Um, make sure that sections and chapter numbers are accurate. None of them okay. struck me as um, weird, but I've, I obviously don't have all of that memorized. So yeah, it, yeah. For the most part, they were <laughs> chapters and sections that, you know, I, seemed right, but okay. yeah, that's, I'll, I'll, I'll verify that for sure. Okay, regular meetings. It's listed the third Thursday at 6.45. Special meetings, quorum, nothing much there. And then uh, redid the order of business to reflect the way that our agenda works. And we left the trustee emeritus thing, which was something that they came came from them, which is just nice. Who knows? And then uh, how this can be amended. And finally, that everything has to be consistent with Lunenberg, Charter and bylaws uh, as well. So, and I would think that would be what the town council would be looking at. Just I don't know that there would be anything else, anything in there, but yeah, I'll make sure I ask him to make sure you know, about that specifically. So after all of these years, there have been bylaws. Not mm -hmm. sure where they ended up, but there were bylaws. But we're now at the point where we can have a set of up-to-date bylaws that reflect what this board is and how this board operates. So so uh, Dick, I have a question for you. Um, in the agenda, we had um, review, discuss, and vote. And I know we talked uh, actually in the subcommittee about voting. Um, it, at this moment, is, there, is it appropriate to vote on these bylaws as amended? I would think so, because then it can be, uh, New York can, can, you know, just put together and polish the amended bylaws so that on Monday he can, when he meets with the uh, town council, but I, I would think that, yeah, I think they're approvable. I, I, I agree with you. Do we, other people have thoughts on that? Um, I didn't hear any objections. So um, could we please have a motion to uh, accept the bylaws as amended. So moved. Seconded. Okay. Okay. So I'd like to do a roll call vote, please, Laura. 
I, I'm sorry, Laura. Yes. Uh, thank you. Bob? Yes. Dick? Yes. Kate? Yes. Donna? 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 Um, uh, I'm sorry, was that Donna? Yes. Okay, so uh, okay, so Donna was affirmative. And uh, Maya? Yes. Okay, Harry, yes. So unanimously approved. It, um, once again, for everybody who worked on this, thank you. It's, uh, it's nice to have these um, becoming in place again. Okay. Um, so uh, are there any board comments? Yeah, friends, friends first. Uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, friends update. So uh, Muir or Dick, or I didn't think that I was at that meeting as well, but would one of the two of you like to take that? Muir, Muir would love to. <laughs> um, it was actually, I think, our shortest meeting in a long time. Um, a pretty brief director's report. Um, yeah. They talked a little bit about organizing for book sales, um, pop-up book sales, uh, and uh, I don't think there was any other. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Harry. So there was a, there was a significant amount of discussion, um, which actually uh, Robin had sort of shepherded about. Um, in, in uh, allowing the library to encourage the friends, uh, sorry, uh, allowing the friends to encourage their members to um, participate in, in Amazon Smiles um, because a very small percentage of the friends members uh, actually participate in it and um, it does contribute to the friends funding. And I believe the conclusion was that the friends were in fact going to do that. Is that accurate, Muir? Yeah, they were preparing to um, send an email campaign through, what do they use, MailChimp? Yeah, um, there was also, uh, in, at the moment, any donations to the friends uh, has to be done via a mailed or a check, either mailed or brought to the library or however. And there was quite a lot of discussion about um, joining the 21st century um, in allowing uh, electronic enrollment uh, of the friends and electronic donations to the friends. And there was discussion about there's a cost to doing that, um, but I think the general thought was there is a cost. You do pay for credit card processing, et cetera, but it would increase the general funding of the friends. A lot of that, a lot of that revolved around the fact that they're looking to do uh, redo or have a website and uh, a, a, an online presence, and the online presence then leads to these other possibilities where memberships, you can, you know, like we're talking earlier on about Tower Hill. Well, all of my Tower Hill membership is done online. My payments are done online, et cetera. And one of the things that was brought up is on some of the pay sites allow you, if I want to donate $50, I can donate $51.20 to cover so that the organization gets the full $50. And that, that, that sort of thing, I think is, I think it's Robin very much sort of dragging, uh, dragging them into, uh, into the, into this new world. Uh, and you know, hopefully they will, they will pursue that. And again, with the MailChimp or whatever, getting out the fact that, you know, it's, it, if you use Amazon, it's pretty easy to simply go and, you know, a, a minuscule amount of every purchase over 
you know, the number of people can add up. So that was definitely one of the things that they were that they were looking at. And similarly, they discussed sending acknowledgments of gifts electronically instead of physically, um, which also you know, would involve an expense, um, but might overall, you know, net positively um, affect their their um, financials. So, you know, saving. Actually, Mira, I, what is I, it? Fifty-five? Is it more than fifty-five cents now? Yeah, I think I think it's actually going to would reduce. I think it would reduce their expenses because they would not be physically mailing. Um, to people who they uh, have email addresses for and yep. that they would mail to only those that they couldn't communicate with electronically, which is really sort of a modern way that uh, 501c3s communicate with, with the members. That about sums it up. I'm sorry, Dick? So that about sums it up. Yep, okay. Uh, any questions about the friends meeting? Um, hearing no questions, um, I'd like to ask if, if there's any board comments. Okay, so I don't hear any board comments either. Um, it is 8.06 p.m. May I please have a motion to adjourn? So moved. This is Dick. Would Second, someone... Donna. Thank you. Um, roll call vote, Laura. Second, it, Donna. So, yes. roll, roll call vote, please, Laura. Yes. Bob? Yes. Dick? Yes. Kate? Yes. Donna? Yes. Maya? Yes, I have a delay for some reason. <laughs> Michael Ray? Yes. Sure, yes. Um, have a good night, you guys. And you were, hey, guys, good as night. always, thank you so much for participating. <laughs> thank you, Harry. Good night. Have a good, good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Bye.